Well, hey there, guys. Welcome back. In this episode, we're going to be talking about why we don't have any greens in here and how's our fog ponding systems are doing. Stick around. All right, guys. Like I said, welcome back. Um, on today's episode, uh, we're going to be talking about how our cilantro did in our rail system and also how's our fog ponding system doing for the past couple of weeks that we've created this um diy project here that you can be linked up in the upper section now <clears throat> i want to apologize that last week i didn't upload a video a couple things happened throughout work and had a little bit of um you know time consumption with that and i couldn't upload the video but besides all that, guys, I thank you for sticking around and coming back to watching this video. Uh, we've been having some comments from you guys, and I thank you for the comments. It's very appreciative. And um, now last week, we <clears throat> sorry, we took out all of our cilantro for sale for you know our community here. And basically, what we encountered is that we had a good, you know, a good batch. You know, everybody was, you know... The aroma of the cilantro and, you know, the textures and the greenness of it. Everybody was very surprised on how good the quality was for our cilantro. Now, what I was doing, instead of having, you know, these cilantros were pretty big, you know, for normal size. Because the other day I went out to our local Fresh Mart and we saw that the cilantros that were selling there, they were being sold for a dollar and they weren't even near as big as ours were. Or they didn't even have any, they were just compared, you know, ours to, to whatever, the, whoever's selling these to them, you know, they weren't even fully grown yet. And basically, so what we did, we, you know, we took that into consideration and what we're doing. So what we're going to be doing now for our rail system, we're already germinating for our next batch. I started this a little bit late. But it, we're still in the learning process of when we should start germinating and, you know, when should we take out. So what we realized in the past month and a week, because that's what I, it took about a month and a week for us to um, ger um, germinate, you know, let them grow in here and then be able to harvest them. Now, it took about a month and a week, guys. So take that down in your uh, consideration. Um, it's been raining here for the past couple of days. It's been extremely hot. So that fluctuation of, you know, humidity and also the rainy weather and the hot weather can, you know, affect your plant growth in some aspects. But I don't think in many aspects it would. Now, we were selling ours for $2 in um, in big bags so basically what we did was we took two um you know two cilantro spots and put them in one bag it was um give or take about six ounces or seven eight ounces no i wouldn't say it was yeah it was about uh, between six to eight ounces of of herbs in the bag for two dollars everybody was extremely surprised at how much they were getting for two dollars um so it was a good um pricing for our cilantro that we were selling and you know for the amount of cost that it takes to grow and stuff like that is reasonable now what we're going to do now we started germinating we um we did we have 55 holes here we usually throw out about 60 in case one of the seed one of the cubes and the seeds didn't germinate properly we eliminate those we have five extra ones now what we're going to be doing we're going to double up for each hole we're going to test out this month we're going to put two two cubes with cilantro is grown now what we have to watch out for is um you know they're not competing with each other that one grows faster than the other one shades out the other one and it doesn't let them grow so we're going to be watching out for that we're going to rearrange a couple of things make sure that we're getting the best sunlight on these plants that they can get a, a good growth on 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 their cycle and basically we have a good production now because if we can double up instead of using we went from 55 to 25 or about almost like 27 bags that we sold it wasn't as i was expecting but now that's what we're going to double up to be able to have our 55 slots being sold two in each for one bag so we don't have to take for the other um the other sides to be able to complete the bags um, what else can I tell you guys? Um, it was a good learning experience. I, I definitely enjoyed 
you know, watching them grow, how they took off after their second week and little things like that. And my end goal is, you know, that we're putting out a good product that everybody's satisfied with. I mean, even though that we had a little problem with our pets with the aphids, they were really, really buggy with it. Now, what I started learning in, um, through the internet about these aphids, what brings them to your plants are the ants, guys. Now, I don't know if I mentioned this exactly in, in one of our previous videos, but if you're going to have your hydroponic system near anywhere that's outdoors that you may have ants occurring, be sure that you you nip it in the bud as soon as possible because those ants, once they start coming in and they start, you know, arranging themselves in the plants, they'll start bringing them aphids in. And it's, it's a pain in the butt to get them. I mean, the Nemo, it, it worked out for a couple of days, but the ants just kept bringing them on, kept bringing them on. Now, I've been doing some research about purchasing ladybugs and getting them, you know, around your your plant crops so that way they can eat up all these aphids supposedly they eat about 50 aphids a day guys so if you can um you know find some ladybugs i know they sell them online in variety of quantities and pricing and stuff like that check into that if you have any problems with pests it's a great natural um pest control system that you really don't have to spray any types of chemicals even though they could be organic but something less to be worrying about um if you have this type of pest um now on over to our fog ponic system as you can see now that our fog ponic system it's been growing now we've been having some problems with it in reference to remember as i told you guys these were the leftover um the germinated uh germinated uh seeds they were left out for like almost two weeks they weren't getting you know the proper water because we left them out we had some extras that we didn't use so we just threw them in the in the fog ponic system some of them did recover we we as you can see now the the um one of the, the cilantros went over into coriander and started to throw out a little stem where it looks like it's going to be uh, germinate or actually flowering. I don't know how this occurred. I mean, this is just one of those things that just happens like that. But um, they've been growing. They're looking green. They're looking healthy. That's the most important thing, that they're healthy and they're growing. Now, the most important things in your fog pond system that they're getting the proper nutrients and they're also that they're getting good growth cycle. As you can see now uh, on this fog pond system, the one that's flowering has the most roots and then the other ones that are starting to grow out, those are the ones that are growing out. Now, for your fog ponic system, guys, when you're going to be topping off your uh, bucket system or containers, however you decide to build your fog ponic system, it is very important, guys, that when you top it off, you do not submerge the roots completely. Why is that? Because these roots, as they're growing, the ones that are in the water are going to be sucking up the water to be able to feed off of the nutrients off of them. And then the other uh, rest of the roots are the ones that are going to be grabbing oxygen. So you don't want to submerge them because then they're gonna get um they're gonna drown out and then your plants are gonna get weak and you know they'll fall over and they can probably die after that. But it's just a little DIY tip for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure that you slap down that uh, like button. Leave us down in the comment section a little comment or anything that you would like to see or hear from us. Um, I thank you again for watching our videos. Stick around for next week for our next update on what's going on with our, our hydroponic system. And I'll see you guys on the next one.